Hi, I'm Les Shaw. I'm Stephen Hewlett. And welcome to another episode of The Computer Mechanics. The Christmas Computer Mechanics. Very close to actually. Yeah, have one almost, more episode next week. Yes, that's right. And uh, we're, we're actually going to uh, still be, we're actually going to be moderating the message board that's during right. the show next week. Steve and I will be as you're watching The Computer Mechanics. And he'll mechanics. wear a Santa suit. And well, they've wanted us to wear this Santa suit that we've got up here on the pole. We'll take a, a peek at it later. Maybe somebody will be wearing that Santa suit for you on the next show. <laughs> you never know, right? I try to, con I just, I try I to convince <laughs> Steve that it's, the hat only fits his head. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're, you're more the Santa size. Uh, are you saying <laughs> robust there? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the computer room, Kenex. And today we're going to slap Steve silly. Yeah. <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, again, we're taking your questions via email at mechanics at durham.net. As well as you can call us live at one eight 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 Rogers eight. Mm -hmm. um, some exciting things that we've been doing uh, this week, working hard and diligently. Mm -hmm. um, the next show is going to be totally dedicated to email, so we're going to respond to all the email that we've been having right. come in. So again, tune into the next week's show. But we're going to be taking calls again today. Yeah, and you have noticed ahead. that you've put some. Uh Yep. Real audio clips on our web page. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I've been playing with real audio not only for our web page but for other websites. And uh, well, actually, we can go to it right now so I can show you how to get into the real audio. In fact, we also have a link there so you can download the real player 5. Right. Excellent. Uh, so if we go to the computer for a moment, we'll go to our website, which is using the wave, of course. Yes. Mechanics. Which I'm also still using. Yeah, and actually, I think that's on wave. the next episode as well. Yeah. There's, oh, okay. There's right. a clip of Steve getting the wave installed at his house. Mm -hmm. um, so you can go through what the procedure is there and you'll be able to see the whole thing. Sure. We were there on a Saturday morning, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it was excellent. Nice okay. wintery well, day, not like today. Yeah. Okay, so now we'll go back to the computer. We're at uh, the website for the computer mechanics, which is mechanics.durham.net. Again, as always, you'll see we have the live message board and then all the posts from before I posted in last. Uh, week's post area right mm -hmm. in this button so you can actually go and search um, using your browser's find mechanism if you're having a problem see whether or not somebody's either solved it or has a problem as well mm -hmm. uh, Steve and I go through it regularly with Blair at home working at home and we have him going through it as yep. well yep. and we reply there that's the fastest place to get uh, a message or a answer to your question correct because uh, not only do we but other people sign on as well um, but what I have at it just recently, in fact, tonight before the show, where it says audio and video clips, if yep. you click there, you'll now see six clips. We will okay. be adding more from all of the previous shows of the Computer Mechanics. Uh, to do that, you have to download the Real Player 5. There's a button to that if you don't oh, already have yeah, it. Very good. And you click on the show clips, and it downloads. And mm -hmm. just like the beginning of today's show, it streams off the website. Look at that, eh? I think we can go full screen, but if I haven't tested it, and it wants me to test it, so I'll test it here. So everybody gets. So there you go. That's how four it seconds. It does two, it quick, just yeah. to make sure. Make sure it's going to work for your system and, and not hang. Ask you, did you see the real logo? Yep. If uh, so. you saw the logo, yes, we did. You can see a lose a bit, but mm -hmm. that's not bad at all. I'm that's not bad at all. Setting this is coming across the internet. This is all uh, streaming directly from the internet. Right. And the way you do that is you actually, we took an AVI file, right. we used a program that came from Real Audio as well called uh, a Real Encoder. Mm -hmm. And what that allowed us to do was to then transfer the AVI file into an RM file, which mm -hmm. is Real Video and Real Audio. Okay. And then on the website, instead of linking to the AVI file or to the RM file, like mm -hmm. you care, <laughs> we, link, we link to an RAM file, which is a text file Correct. that does the streaming. Yeah. Like you know. <laughs> I followed you all the way. I don't have to fill him in on this. Yeah. Um, so hopefully somebody caught up. But again, you can see clips. We're going to be putting a lot more clips there as well. And I do, do we Go ahead. still, do we have Blair live? Uh, I, mean, I know he I, just got a camera too, so. We should be able to bring Blair directly. And actually, I was talking to Blair over the video phone where you can do video conferencing mm -hmm. and such. You and I have done it 
yeah. a lot. And I've done the same with Blair. And Blair's video, doing? Yeah, video and the video is quite good. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to try that hopefully today Excellent. as well. Um, I just want to quickly go in. There's a button on our website about us, and there's a little uh, bio of each of us, Steve, Les, there's Blair. Got some centering problems. But there is our producer, Chris. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. And as we sit here and wait, you'll see actually Chris will uh, change because we've got him in a, a real clip. You'll see him fade away there. I used the Adobe Photoshop that I downloaded <laughs> there off the internet. His dinner. There's him and his donut. Yeah, his donut. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> just That's so that cool. everybody knows that this is our producer. <laughs> big bio on him. Notice we all have little paragraphs. Uh -huh. <laughs> he's got a big one. <laughs> Excellent. There you go. That's right, why he's a producer. There you go. That's why he's a producer. Exactly. And uh, probably we won't be back next season, but we're going to try. <laughs> <laughs> so again, feel free yeah. to visit our site at mechanics.durham.net. Get into the live chat session, which is being moderated live. That's right. And we've got lots of callers coming through. So let's go off and talk to Adam. We Adam. Have... Hi, Adam. Hi, Adam. Adam? Hello, Adam? Hello? We don't seem Hi, to Hi, Adam. Hello. How are you today? Oh, what was going on there? Couldn't get through. Oh, okay. Uh, we, yeah, we were having some problems here, too. But now that we're corrected, how can we help you, sir? Okay, I was just wondering, on the Windows 95 desktop, uh -huh. I have some icons that I tried deleting. Okay. And I get a message saying that I can't delete them, and I was wondering how I go about getting rid of them. Which icons would you like to remove? Um, I have one that's called Internet and one that's called Inbox and all that that I don't really want there. Okay. Uh, I'll actually, I'll remove the inbox so I'm not using it <laughs> here on the desktop. Um, I'll move it up to this area. What happens with those icons mm -hmm. is that when you go to delete them, what it's really informing you is that you can delete the icon, uh, but it can't put that icon into the recycle bin because it's a different way of attaching rather than a shortcut. So if I click on delete and then I click on yes, it will remove the icon, but it just means you can't retrieve the icon again out of the recycle bin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the other area of doing that is you can download a program called Tweak UI, mm -hmm. and yep. Tweak UI will give you the ability to actually select the programs that will appear on your desktop. Yes. Okay. And does that can... answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So the message really isn't that you can't delete it. It's just saying that I can't right. put it in the recycle bin like any other files would go to. It yeah. says looking at your computer there and. The yeah. message that I get yeah. isn't the same as the one you have. I just have to click yes and it still remains on the desktop. Then that's where you would need Tweak UI. Then download Tweak UI. It could be mm -hmm. the different version in Windows. I'm using the, the, the newer version of Windows here. Um, so if you download, are you you're on the internet? Yes, I am. Okay, if you go to www.microsoft.com and look under, there's an option there that says free software. Go down to the area, we can actually go there right now. Mm -hmm. uh, or Windows 95, www.windows95.com. Okay, and that will download a program called Tweak UI. You install that program and it actually puts an icon in your control panel that looks like it's actually made by Microsoft. Right. Uh, all kinds of gears and such, and it allows you to control a lot of things in your computer system that weren't pre built right. in to be able to control, mm -hmm. like the icons that will show up on your screen. Mm -hmm. On your desktop, as you would ask. You just, okay. yep, don't want okay. this one, don't want this one. You can add more to the desktop. You can add more there. So. You can tell it not to put the word shortcut when you do make shortcuts onto your desktop. Or that little arrow that it puts on those shortcut folders. You, you can adjust that those. as well. Yep. Um, All right. So it's called Tweak UI, T W E A K U I. Okay. Okay, and that, that should fix that problem there. Okay. okay. Are you guys giving out free gifts this time? Uh, we are giving out one. We only have one. So Steve's going to just randomly choose someone. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so apologize for that. <laughs> oh, no problem. Okay. 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 Bye. -bye. Thanks a lot. Bye. bye bye. Have you decided how you're going to give out the gift? No. <laughs> it's a, a power bar with internet ready capability. Heavy duty power bar. And yes, actually, it's a and, very nice. Uh, and the and the hat and the and a mouse pad. And a mouse pad. I uh, wasn't okay. going to mention the hat because I was going to kind of. No, you can't have the <laughs> grab hat. that one myself. You okay. Can't. Okay. <laughs> Let's call out to okay. another call. I'll tell we'll you fight what. later. <laughs> the first person that can guess my age. Uh, then that's who wins. Okay. How's that? All right. As long as you don't know Steve and you can <laughs> guess Steven's age. Well, okay. I don't know if they. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. He's 40. <laughs> no. Okay. Yeah. We've got uh, Farzat. Farzat. Hello. How are you? Thank you. Uh, I was just wondering, I have a 486 computer and my hard drive, uh, for, I don't know what happened to it, it got uh, broken and I had to get a new hard drive and I installed Windows 3.1 again. 
But right now, anytime I try to open a DOS uh, program or an MS DOS prompt, anything that has to do with DOS, my screen suddenly, when I come back to Windows, it shrinks down. Like, and then I have to exit Windows, come back for it to get fixed again. Okay. I don't know why it happens like that. Uh, because your monitor is syncing between two modes, um, mm. you're, when you're in a DOS mode, you're not putting your monitor into as high a resolution as you are when you're in a Windows mode. Okay. So when you go out to a DOS application, and in fact, I could even go to one here, you'll notice that uh, if we can go to the computer for a second, I'm going to launch Microsoft DOS. So there's a DOS window there. Yes. It's not 3.1, but it works the same in 3.1. Yes. If I press Alt-Enter, it will give me a full DOS screen. Yes. And if I press Alt-Enter again, it'll take me back so that my DOS becomes somewhat of a window-oriented Mm -hmm. Session. Oriented, yeah. So yeah. what he, he may may require is um, maybe some updated drivers for his video card, video card in Windows, and or sometimes what happens is you may require um, a line in your auto config.sys which actually tells what kind of monitor or resolutions you want to run, and there's so mode, I mean, mode, mode equals. equals, mode equals EGA, do you, yeah. do you know it off the off the top? No, I don't. Actually, okay. if Blair's watching. We, we should have that uh, by the end of the show. But there, you're right. Uh, Config.sys mode equals con. It should actually be right in your Windows mm -hmm. uh, manual, the Windows 3.1. Okay. Uh, but look for display drivers that you can put in your Config.sys and AutoExec, and that will help your monitor from syncing that syncing problem. Okay. Another way, to, another thing to try yes. is that when you go into a DOS window before you exit the program. Try pressing the Alt Enter key, mm -hmm. okay? Oh, okay. And then that'll put it, your DOS into a, a Windows type of a mode. Yes. And then type in Exit, and then your monitor's already been synced correctly. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Right. Another another quick thing to try is if you're running DOS applications yes. in Windows 3.1, there's files called PIF files, and they uh, program interface files, and they allow DOS applications to interface a little bit more smoothly with Windows 3.1. So if you go to uh, the file run area yes. and type in PIF edit, okay, PIF edit, uh, program interface file editor, yes. it'll actually bring up an editor for you where you can tell it how to handle your, your screen resolution modes. Oh, yes. Okay, so okay. PIF edit, PIF files, as well as mm -hmm. try putting your DOS into a, a Windows uh, Alt Enter is the key, Alt -enter, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then type in exit, and that hopefully will help you out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And right. I was just wondering, the resolution in my computer, the colors are not very like uh, very good graphics. They're like a dot dot kind. I was just okay. wondering, is that uh, because of the monitor I should change it, or the video uh, graphics adapter I should change it? Probably. I think Steve was right on the area where he was talking about drivers. Yes. Mm -hmm. So probably the drivers that you're using for Windows 3.1 are off and not yeah. the correct drivers, and that could relate to both problems. Right. One. You may be just using like a standard uh, VGA. Could be yeah. in the 16 colors. Well, actually, right? if you if you go to uh, your Windows setup and yeah. try your monitor at standard VGA, it's only going to be right. 16 colors. It's going to say just VGA. Yes. Yeah. And then try your DOS and see if that corrects your problem. See if your monitor's a bit clearer. Now, to note, you're only going to get 16 colors. Mm -hmm. In order to go up a bit higher, which would say 256 colors, yes. you're going to need to load the appropriate driver for your video adapter. For the video adapter. For the video adapter. Yeah. yeah. What resolution are you running in? I think uh, it's 256 colors. 256 colors? 640 yes. by 480? 640 by 480? Yes, that's what I think, yes. Okay, uh, take a look, because a lot of the times when they are doing, they have a, a generic Super VGA driver yeah. that would put you to 256 colors. Yeah. Um, if you can, put it to VGA and see if your problem's been corrected. Yes. Again, you're only getting 16 colors, so then you're going to want to find the appropriate driver for your Windows 3.1 and your video card. And yep. the video card, yeah. yes. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, right. yeah, have a good day. You. Didn't guess your age. Okay, nope. so nope. everyone Didn't that calls it. in has to guess Steve's age. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, no, no hints. No hints. No hints. No hints. No. Okay, all right. Actually, okay. I think it's gonna be easier to guess your age than it will be mine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. If, you, if you get if you get people, both ages, you get the power bar. Most people the hat can't count that high. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right too. No. Okay. Like myself. <laughs> we got lots of colors okay. coming through. We're gonna talk to Eugene. Hi, Eugene. Hi, uh, Eugene. Hi. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? Very good. Any idea how old Steve is? Uh, 34. Oh. No. Nope. Uh, wow. No. Ooh. No. Too far away. But okay. Stay Thanks. tuned. How can we help you, sir? <laughs> okay. I have uh, this program. 
I have Windows 95 on my computer. Okay. And this program runs only under DOS and not even in the window, just like you have to shut down to DOS. Okay. okay the thing is that this program requires extended memory. And whenever mm -hmm. I try to run it in DOS, it says that I don't have the extended memory installed. So I was just wondering, is there a way to like put some line in the auto exec which would load up the extended memory while I'm in DOS? That would be in your config.sys that you would have to load um, to get uh, extended memory. And it would be actually two lines. The very first line that you want in your config.sys um, with running Windows 95 is C colon backslash um, Windows backslash highmem.sys. That would be the very first line. Okay? Okay. And your second line would be C, or actually, sorry, go back to the first one. In front of the C colon, you have to put device equals. Okay. okay? So it's device equals C colon backslash Windows backslash highmem.sys, which is a file in the Windows directory. And then after, you're going to need to put device equals C colon backslash Windows backslash emm386.exe. And there's different variations you can put after that. So you need to have those two lines to begin with, and that'll take care of your extended um, EMS memory. What what EM, emm386.exe does is allows you to go auto between the two of them. Now, if you're looking just for straight extended memory, which really is what you get originally, mm -hmm. without any drivers loaded, it's the expanded memory right. that is adjusted. So what it, what those drivers do is make the memory pageable. Right. Um, and if you actually load the line, like Steve was saying, the first line is going to be device equals C colon backslash windows backslash high mem, H I M E M dot S Y S. Mm -hmm. And the next line that you mentioned was device equals C colon backslash windows backslash E M M 386 dot E X E. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's what I said. Space. <laughs> and then if you're looking for straight, put. N O E M S, which stands for no EMS, right. and it'll be straight extended memory. So that should help you out there in your auto exec and config.sys. Right. Um, but you were saying it won't run in Windows. Uh, you're using Windows 95? Yeah. What, what's the name of the program? Um, it's uh, called uh, GWiz. It's G like a program that allows you to kind of cheat in games. Oh, okay, all right. I haven't seen that one, but there is a way when you're actually creating a shortcut for DOS applications to tell Windows not to notify the program that you're there, mm -hmm. as well as there's a, and we can actually, if we can go to the computer for a second, I'll show you a neat little uh, trick that's here. I'm just going to take a, a DOS program, uh, command.com. Mm -hmm. If I can find it, see it? Okay. okay. Yep. I'm going to take my command.com and drag it over to my desktop, and okay. when I let go, that'll allow me to select, I use my right mouse button to do that dragging. That will allow me to create a shortcut here, which it doesn't move the program. It just links my desktop now to that program. Right. Once I've done that, I now have a new icon called Shortcut to MS-DOS Prompt, OK? I'm going to then take my mouse and click on the right mouse button and choose Properties. Mm -hmm. Underneath Properties, you're going to see a lot more options here than you would normally with a Windows 95 application. Right. So you're going to see one here called Program. Mm -hmm. And at the very bottom of Program, you're going to see an option there called Advanced. Mm -hmm. When you click on Advanced, the very first line says, prevent the MS-DOS-based program from detecting Windows. All right. That's so if right. your program won't run under Windows 3.1 normally, right. it will, this will allow it to run. Okay. But the other neat thing you have here, too, is rather than changing your config.sys and auto-exec so mm -hmm. it affects everything, you can actually create a config.sys and an auto exec bat file right. just for that program. So when you double click on that program, it will launch you into a DOS mode. And you'll see here where it says MS DOS mode. You may not be able to see that on TV. Mm -hmm. But when I click on it, it allows me to either use my current MS DOS configuration, or I can click here and mm -hmm. specify a whole new one down here. So this is where I would add that device equals Device equals C colon backslash Windows backslash EMM. I might as well type mm -hmm. it in at the same time. Device, mm -hmm. oops, if I can type correctly. Device <laughs> equals C colon backslash uh, Windows backslash EMM386.exe space mm -hmm. no EMS. Right. So whenever I click on this icon, this DOS space icon now, mm -hmm. it's going to pop me right out to a DOS. Window, right? Or actually, it's going to take me right out of Windows and put me in a DOS mode. Right. Okay. It's going yeah. to unload okay. some of its Windows stuff, 
and allow you to run with whatever configuration you required in your autoexec and config.sys. This is a better way of doing it because it means you're not affecting all your other programs yeah. as well. Okay? Nice okay. Does that help out? Yep. Okay, great. Okay, okay thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Okay, Bye-bye. I can talk. <laughs> oh, can you ever? Yeah, but I think that, that's, that's, that's a correct way of doing it, too. Uh, sure. Because the other yeah, option absolutely. you get is under the configuration settings, right, you have the ability to go select. You can add your CD-ROM in a yeah. DOS mode and things like sure. that, too. Okay, uh, let's go off to, I'm having problems right now connecting to Woody. Oh. Our Blair, gentleman at home that does our internet website, so hopefully he's editing at the same time. <laughs> Again, our message board, we'll take a look at how it's doing. And uh, did he try and guess? Oh, he's 34. He tried yeah, to guess 34. Oh. I'm having a day. Okay, we've got one message right now sitting on our message board. All right, everybody go there. <laughs> and uh, yeah, everyone go to our message board and keep, keep happening yep. there. Let's go to Michael. Okay. Hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. Hi. How are you today? Oh, not bad. Uh, any idea how old Steve is? Uh, 42. Oh, good. <laughs> good one. Okay. Uh, how can we help you, sir? Wow. Uh, I was wondering, because sometimes when I print, it doesn't print like what I have. It just prints all these little letters and numbers on top of my page, and it goes on for like so long. Okay. Uh, what program? Do you want to try it? Go ahead. No, I'm just listening to him. I, I, I use uh, PerfectWorks, and then if it doesn't work through there, I try through Notepad and Word. I try through a bunch of... I try so when you like, print, you get... A bunch of characters? Yeah, it just comes out like a little at sign and then like all these things. Well, I don't know. Normally that, that to me that represents probably got the wrong driver mm -hmm. that you're using to the printer. What kind of printer do you have? Uh, HP 660C. So, so that's a color printer? Yeah. Inkjet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, did you, you install the drivers? Yeah. Uh, Windows 3.1? Uh, 95. 95? Okay. Uh, did you do a print test page? Yeah. And it came out perfectly? Yeah. Okay. See, uh, this, this, it was okay before, but then after a while, like it's, it happened now. Like I had the printer for like a year, and it was all right, and then it started happening recently. Just recently. Can you do a, a good test print now, and still comes out okay? Yeah. See, right, it, like whenever I set my computer, and then I go back into the program, I can print it. But when I some, like when I first turn on my computer and I print, it won't work. I reset the computer, and then it will work. Hmm. Oh. Um, hmm. Well, definitely something has changed. <laughs> So, yeah, somewhere and, along the line. You're going you're gonna to hear, uh, when you talk to any technical support people, they're going to say, what's changed between when it was working and what hasn't working? And 99% of the time, you've either loaded an application or somehow corrupted the files. Uh -huh. um, but my recommendation there would be is, first of all, try to do a test page print right from the printer itself. Right. And that's normally by holding down two buttons. And if you actually lift the lid, if I'm not mistaken, of that printer, it lifts up. Yeah. Lift the lid. There should be instructions on how to do a I think print maybe. test page yeah, right there. you hold there. the top little thing and it starts flashing and it goes. That prints off okay? Yeah. Okay, so then there's something that's wrong between the printer and the computer communicating, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you, you may want to check what type of uh, printing mode that you're in. You also may want to check that your printer cable is firmly attached because he says it's working every now and then. Hmm, um, yeah. what, what other areas would you? Well, you're, you're the I HP mean, printer man. Sometimes, I mean, something in the CMOS might have been changed, like the way it's translating. It's either it's EPP, CPP, or SPP. SSP. Or, yeah. yeah. I find the best so. one to be ECP plus EPP, and right. that seems to work for my parallel scanner as well as my printer. Go ahead, sorry, you were saying? Uh, I, that's right. Um, so should I reinstall the thing? or um, Reinstall the driver. That's not going to hurt anything. Yeah. Uh, unless you've downloaded a newer driver off their website, which sometimes that helps as well. Mm -hmm. But I would say, uh, first of all, delete the printer off yeah. out of Remove your Windows 95, and then re-add the printer. Uh, that probably is going to fix the problem. All right. Well, that's okay. what I would try first. Yeah, so, especially I mean. if it's working, and then uh, so I would give that a shot as well as if you find that it, it continues to happen, is it a possibility that printer's reheating? Or overheating. Ah, uh, it's not. I don't think. Well, it could be possible, it's but I think the, I think the printer driver. <laughs> Steve's just, just so confident. Okay. All right. So, and was I right for the age or? No, you, uh, way no, off. Sorry. But it was a, it was a good try. <laughs> <laughs> so I apologize for that. And right. uh, yeah, give us a shout back. But uh, I would say reinstall your print driver. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, but but delete the other one first. That way you're not keeping any of the settings yeah. from the original yeah. one. Uh, do a print test page, and if that seems to work out fine, go into a couple packages. You mentioned WordPad. Try WordPad, which is mm -hmm. a package that comes with Windows 95. 
Also try the notepad. Try to print something from there. That way you're not worried about fancy fonts or colors yeah. or anything. It's just straight text. And that'll give you a better idea if it's working or not. Um, but a couple of my customers are using those printers and they're, they're working fine. Yeah. And so then one more thing, I heard something about yeah. the worm virus on the thing. Is that any true or worm? Yahoo? Worm virus? Yeah, I saw on the news something about that. Or I have not heard anything about it. I heard something um, about that. I'll tell you one thing about uh, some viruses, and people have posted a few of them onto our, our, emailed me as well as posted them on our message board. And it's the one about if you get this email, don't oh. open it because it, yeah. as long as you're not opening the attachment, I've not come across or heard of. These are called chain letters. Yeah. Right. Uh, so those are uh, always terrible. verify it. I haven't heard anything about the worm virus, but you'll get these chain letters that oh, you'll get a virus if you get this message. Please send it off to a lot of people. Uh, that is not the case. And mm. also ICQ. I was reading on their website that if you've got any information about ICQ wanting you to email something off to a whole bunch of people or ICQing it off yeah. to everybody, don't do it because it didn't come from them. They're called chain letters. So to be very careful there. Yeah. Um, and there's and also macro viruses that can infect uh, documents programs like yeah, WordPad. But again, their like programs, WordPress. they're something that actually yeah. runs, not that just shows you. Right. Um, so, so you maybe, might want to take a look. Yeah, it's hard to say. I haven't heard about the worm one, but if anyone has, they can feel free to post it on our message board. But yep. do be careful about those chain letters that keep coming out. All right, thanks. Okay, I appreciate okay. it. Thanks very much take for the care. call. Okay, uh, we'll go and check the message board, see if we've got more. Of course, we've just got one person, and it's Bill. <laughs> While searching for topics on Yahoo, I, I frequently get a cookie error from Yahoo. Tech support has no ideas why and says that you don't worry about it uh, if you're getting it. It means it's trying to put a cookie on the system. And uh, as we look down here, once accepted, they are stored in a cookie file. Any thoughts? Can I prevent them from appearing? Thanks. Uh, we'll take a look. A cookie basically well, is a file that lands. If you're using Internet Explorer, like four or something, you have the option to not receive cookies. But what it does, it'll come up and ask a question. Do you want to receive it? Doesn't yes even or no? give you a, no options at all. Just don't even ask. Okay. All right. You can so set that it, too. It's, it's, it's in the options. And we'll take a look so. at it. We're going to go to a break, and we're going to come back, and we're going to take a look under the options of Internet Explorer, as Steve had said. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to eat lots of candy canes. All right. Nobody's guessed that's, his age yet. You can email right. us his agent and as I'm well. And I'm getting older <laughs> here. <laughs> Let's go to break. Okay.
Hi, I'm Les Shaw. It's <laughs> Stephen Hewlett. And we're back again. We're back again. <laughs> Answering your questions at this one This is not eight another eight. show. This is just back from the it's break. It's the same show. I was, <laughs> I was getting right involved with the computer here and forgot that we were oh, on TV. Looks, looks like we have some computer problems. <laughs> no, I rebooted it. Oh. Um, but just to clear out memory, so we can take all of your email of people guessing Steve's age, and no one's got it right. <laughs> That's right. But actually, I think our like last guess. Maybe we should take uh, the hard drive out. Yeah, actually, let's take a look at what's happening. Yeah. Okay. You just get that out, and I'll grab a caller. Okay, we're right. going to go off and talk to Al. Okay, there's your hard drive. Oh, cool. All right, that's right out of the computer system we're using here. Wow. And okay. if you want to, don't do this at home, but we're going to no, take a look and don't. see what's inside of it. I yeah. don't think uh, Chris is going to get too upset with us at all if we nah, take this apart. No, he won't get too upset. Okay, unscrew it. Okay. Okay, and we've got Al. Hi, Al. Hello there. How are you doing? Very well. Yourself? Very good, good. thank you. How can we help you? Okay, uh, I belong to a self-help group, and we got uh, a couple of old computers, Compact 386. Okay. And I put uh, two of them together to get one basically working. Okay. But uh, I had to take out the uh, the uh, large disk drive, diskette drive, and install the three and a half. Okay. Now it comes up and it says uh, run the uh, setup program. And I tried hitting various keys when it's booting, but nothing has uh, succeeded. Okay, it is a, a 386, compact 386? Right. Okay, a couple key combinations. I thought it was F2. Yeah. I thought I, when your machine boots up, after it counts the memory, and you'll see the mm -hmm. little cursor flash, at that precise time, press the F2 key. Right, sometimes you're going to see a little square cursor in the top right-hand corner Yeah. at flashing. As soon as you see that, hit the F2 key. And that should take you into setup. Or here's another way to cheat. Hold down a couple keys on the keyboard as the machine's booting up. And, you get a keyboard and you'll get error. a keyboard error. And right. it'll say press F1 or press F2. F2. I, I'm pretty sure it's F2. Right. Press F2 for setup. Right. Um, so that, no, that's the way. No, it just says keyboard error, press F1. Oh, okay, it's not oh, the F2. Also, there was some of the older compacts required a disk, Yeah. right? to actually boot off the disk, so... That's I mean, why I asked if it was a 386, because... Uh, it is a 386. Yeah. Some of the... Th uh, it must have been a mu uh, much older one, if Steve's on the right path, though, because some of the 286s, in order to change the setup of the computer system, what you actually had to do was to uh, put a diskette in and boot from that diskette or run a program off the hard drive right. that would access the CMOS. And then you could go in and tell what types of floppy drives and hard drives you had. Right, because on some of the compact models, there was a, a diagnostics partition that was on the hard drive. So you would actually go in and run away from the hard drive. I mean, actually, even the new ones have a diagnostics partition. That's where all the CMOS information is stored. So, so how do I get to that? Uh, how would you get that disk? You definitely have to find out the exact model of the system and type. I mean, compact is pretty vague yeah, because you, there's thousands of models. Look at the back of your machine. So mm -hmm. even though it may be a compact something, look I at I think it's a 386S or something like this. Okay. Look at the back of the machine where the serial number normally is. Right. And it'll actually have a model number. Right. That model number will tell you or will tell Compact what kind of system it is. Then right. The but next step from there would be to call actually Compact mm -hmm. themselves mm -hmm. or go to a few of these. There's a lot of uh, stores that are popping up, the, the used computer stores. Mm -hmm. By chance, they may have the diskette because, remember, they're working on these older systems on a regular basis. Right. So they well, I, I tried to load a diskette. <coughs> it's lo try to load oh, some yeah, programs in and it will not load because it's looking mm -hmm. for something which uh, it's not getting. I was, just, I was just thinking about that. We're giving you an answer on how to load a diskette, but the disk was, diskette was really the problem that you were having. Right. Mm. Um, let's see. I mean, the way I would go around it, of course, but I, I go into computers on a regular basis and I have a lot of spare parts. So I would take the, I would put back the drive that was originally in there, it'd be it a five and a quarter, you were saying? Right. And then run it off the five and a quarter. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't happen to be the case, then oh. mm, what's another way about this? Have uh, to get your hands on uh, Again, you'd have to get your hands on a five and a quarter if that's what the system was originally set up for. Right. Exactly. And then run it that way. Then there is a five and a quarter inch setup disk somewhere in the world. Yeah, if not, or if they... I don't have a five and a quarter inch diskette drive. Okay, is that what was in it originally? Right. 
Mm. Mm. You, you got kind of a, a tough one there. If there's no pre-built-in setup on the computer system, you have to load it somehow. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to load it from either a five and a quarter or a three and a half inch floppy, um, especially being the older 386. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, in a sense. Or the next step would be, as I had mentioned, to take your computer. Uh, I would take your whole machine down to one of these used shops. I'd yeah. say, you know, you know, used shops. There's a lot around that sell refurbished computer equipment right. and ask them because I mean they probably have a spare five and a quarter inch that's working plug it and in even help I, can't, you out. I can't even see it taking longer than a half hour um, mm -hmm. so I mean so you may have to spend thirty to forty dollars hopefully coming out of the petty cash of the group that you're with right. um, and, but they'll get the machine up and running for you Mm -hmm. um, that's what I would do. I would take another five and a quarter inch floppy, but of course yourself putting these machines together aren't going to have a lot of spare parts. Right. Yeah. So that's a tough one. Any idea how old Steve is? Uh, no, I don't have a TV in this room. Ah, okay. All right. Guess? Any guess? Uh, Twenty-nine. Oh, yeah, he wins. Oh, you won. <laughs> you won. Yeah, Bang you're right on. on the nose. First guess. <laughs> So if you wanna, if you want to, uh, we're gonna call you back, and uh, you you win a power bar and a hat. <laughs> okay. And a mouse pad. <laughs> All right, and a mouse pad. So there you go. Okay, All right, got something great. out of it. Twenty nine. Steve is twenty nine. One person guessed forty. One person guessed thirty four. But he is twenty nine. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, then. Okay, Thank okay. you. Yeah. Bye. See, he that's didn't get. So you got sort of a resolution for him, but he yeah. got some free equipment for his group. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Got a mouse pad. A mouse pad, and a hat. And a really nice power bar, actually. And the power bar actually nice. has uh, surge protection for the internet, too. Yep. So wow. that's, that's our gift for the giveaway phone for today. Right, you can call it the internet. Okay, anyway. Okay. So now we've got this hard Don't, drive. Do not take do your not hard drives at, at home. home. Flash, flash, flash. Do we're not just doing it do here this to upset home. our producer. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to have a look inside just to see, because I know there are some data errors in here. So if we can, oh, there we go. So basically what we have here, at this piece here, is the head, the heads, right that, here. That that, that's what back moves and back forth. and forth. All right. And you got to so, think of these, it as multi-trade too, right? So these are the platens right here, and this is where all the data is stored. And there's actually, if you can get in an angle, in this one there's two platens, and they write on the top, on the underside of this platen, on the top of the second platen, and also on the bottom of the second platen. Not really much to it. Looks just like a compact. You know, compact CD. Now, what's the hope that we're going to put this back in this machine that's going to work? Beat me up, Scotty. Not much. <laughs> Not now, a chance. The reason, you'll notice the seals. Now, again, you yeah. never never take a hard drive apart. Never, Not for ever. any reason whatsoever, right. unless you're one of the computer mechanics on our TV show. You'll right. notice the seal. And right. if you've ever seen these drives being made, and the guys are wearing the, the no oh, dust absolutely. and everything. They have point, 0 0.5 microns per can cause whatever of dust in the air. And this spins around. Now it's got fingerprints all over. It's got fingerprint. Oh, uh, it's uh -oh. going to be really tough. Chris, <laughs> we've wrecked the computer. Uh -oh. Just so the producer knows. <laughs> we'll wow. back. They'll take it out of our free salary. <laughs> yeah, that's correct. <laughs> Give me a raise. <laughs> Two percent of nothing is nothing. Yes, just do not <laughs> attempt this at home. But I mean, that's, that's what's just inside. Just don't because you'll ruin your drive. Steve did it. What he doesn't know is we brought that from his house, and that is his his hard drive. Yeah. But uh, that's great. Excellent. Okay, that's what's inside I of a hard drive. I just thought it was kind of neat. When We've I got first saw lots it. of callers. It is, it is quite neat, actually. Okay. Uh, lots of callers coming through, and one of those callers is Blair. Ow. Hi, Blair. Did we speak to Al? Hello, we, how are you doing? We, is this Blair? Yep. Hi, Blair, how are you today? Not too bad. How are you doing? Good, thanks. I'm sorry I couldn't get the guess, but I was going to guess the right one. I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Uh, uh, just a couple of quick comments, and then I'll ask you uh, uh, two really quick questions. With respect to the compact computers, having worked on a few of them, um, mm -hmm. he might, I don't know whether the uh, caller is still listening, he might want to uh, try either the F8, F10, or delete key. On some of the older 386 compacts, those are the key functions that are required as opposed to the F2. Yeah, okay. well, I haven't, I haven't heard of the... Uh Delete, I've, delete for sure. Um, I mean, that's in the. That's ten I've heard. I, I like all the different combinations that you can come up with. Some of the older systems had what, but Control Alt S and can yeah. Control Alt and Escape at the same time as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah. so you were mentioning F8. 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 It's, it's, it's probably going to be F10. 
Okay, uh, but uh, but F8 has worked on some of them, and so has the delete key. Okay, okay. all right, great. that's great. I appreciate that. that. that We're out. looking for help as well as yeah. something else. <laughs> no, well, yeah, I'll tell you, it's been through painstaking effort that yeah, exactly. uh, that we've stumbled across some of these. And just the one other comment: the fellow that called in about trying to get rid of the inbox in the internet. Yeah. Yes. Um, the inbox deleting it is exactly what you said. He's going to get that message, but um, he indicated that he wasn't getting the same message. And the message that he was getting is when you're trying to delete that internet icon you cannot delete it it's uh, you you have to go in from what I understood or what I was explained to me by Microsoft is that you have to go into control panel under it. Windows 95 setup and there's an option there to deselect it I actually hadn't a thought about going into the control panel under add and remove programs and you that's can remove the inbox as well that's right yeah the newer version of Windows allows you to delete it but the message that you get is the fact that it can't put it into the recycle bin that's right um, yeah. and it'll remove it too but also tweak UI the program mm -hmm. we mentioned that allows you to select which icons are displayed on your desktop, which is quite neat as well. The, the Tweak UI is a great program. It's a yeah. lot of fun, but yeah. uh, in the wrong hands, it could be pretty dangerous. It, I it, think it can, it can be. I don't know if there's any options in there that are dangerous. I know I like the ones about the paranoia. Uh, that allows you to clear out your your document yeah. settings, uh, uh, your internet uh, temporary files. Yeah, exactly. And that was also the area where you could set up your default uh, on Tweak UI mm -hmm. That's for right. what your search browse was going to be in the Internet Explorer if you happen to be using that one. That's right. Right. So, okay, okay, well, I'll ask you two really quick questions. The first one is um, a, a few months ago, and I'm saying I, I'm pointing that particular point out only because um, I had made some uh, changes on my computer and uh, installed some software, but at a particular time I was boot rebooting the computer and uh, it gave me a Windows 95 registry error saying that either it was corrupt or it was unable to load all of the devices and some of the devices may not operate properly. Now I realize that there is some sort of a backup that if you catch it soon enough you can go back in and, and restore the settings, but Unfortunately, I didn't catch it quick enough, and now several months have passed. Has any software programs been developed that will do a, a repair on a Windows 95 registry, or am I resorting to stripping it down and starting over? Um, I've actually come across uh, just this week, somebody emailed me. Actually, the gentleman that we upgraded his computer on the show emailed me a really neat uh, uh, site from CNET. Uh, if you www.cnet.com, uh -huh. and they have a whole download section, and they did a whole article on registry repair. Um, of course, there is the program RegEdit, um, but that's just more if you want to go in bare bones and go through and try and, and fix some problems that you may be having. Right. But there's also a program called RegClean, and what it will do is actually go through your RegEdit files and find any problems, as well as look for any orphaned. Uh, uh, entries in the registry, so programs you may have removed, but it still stayed in the registry. It helps to speed up your startup and your shutdown as well. Oh, good. Um, and, mm -hmm. and the cleaning. Now, if you go on to the internet, I, I think I've also found it at www.downloads.com. Yep. Right. It was actually That's called that Reg Clean. Oh, really? So yep. when you do that installation, it installs a program very nonchalantly because you can't see it in the start menu or on your desktop. Right. So you have to actually go into program files on your C drive, yep. and you're going to see uh, an group there called Reg Clean, and that seems to work out quite well. I've liked that program mm -hmm. a lot. Great. Um, it's not a very sophisticated program, but all you want it to do is to fix yeah. uh, to fix uh, it yeah. as well. Actually, I've used that myself. So. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and what you can't see it doing is probably the better, so that you don't yeah. get into deeper problems. <laughs> and you get all nervous. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't want to. But the other neat thing about it is that it will back up your registry file as well, so if you want to go back to where you were before, oh, good. Uh, that's another yeah. one. Uh, again, we can't mention enough about backup, 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 mm -hmm. and uh, I think I fall into that case myself. I now have a tape drive where I back up all of the email that comes into us and such. But when you go into backup originally, it creates a, a program called Full Backup. Right. And that not only backs up any files that you select, but you can have it just back up your system registry files. I would say back those up onto a floppy. Yeah. Um, you can also create a startup diskette that might sure, help yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, but if you ever do get that message, one of the options there is to restore your registry from the backup. Right. Uh, and like I you said, I guess people don't ever take the backup comments seriously until something goes no, wrong. No. Unfortunately, you keep, you keep telling and backup, backup. I'll tell you, I work for a lot, a lot of large scanning. companies, and if they lost their data, I, I mean, everybody would be in a lot of trouble. I mean, we're talking lots and lots of customers. So backup is extremely important. If it's worth doing, 
mm -hmm. and worth keeping and you've been using it for a long time, don't worry about backing up the programs. You've got diskettes and CDs for that. I seen a company four years ago had a four gig SCSI drive in their network. Yeah. Some, they didn't back up. The hard drive crashed. Absolutely no way. We, nobody could retrieve it. So they had to send it out for data recovery. Cost them $5,000 to get, uh, there was like three something gig. Little little bits, yeah. Yeah, I, even yeah. maybe it was even more. And yeah. with the newer tape drives, I, I, I'm not sure whether many of the viewers know that the you can buy tape drives now, either used or new, and they're pretty inexpensive now that those bigger gigabyte yeah. drives are coming out. And and what you do yeah. is, and like you said, I, I agree with your statement exactly because you can also set it to back up at night while you're sleeping. Your computer can be backing up your system, so when you wake up, you can feel confident that anything could happen and you have a backup. Sure. Um, but also looking at that, there's zip drives now. That are available for approximately about $189, I guess, was the last price that I saw. Yeah. And they'll, those cartridges are about $25 a piece, and they'll hold 100 megs of data. Yeah. So you can really back up most of your documents right onto this file. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you've got your Quicken files, uh, I'm just using that as an example. There's Microsoft Money and such. All your financial data can be stored on to one of these larger disks. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the disk that you were telling me about that came out in a new machine? Oh, the 120 meg floppy disk. It was like a floppy disk. Yeah, just so like a regular three and a half inch floppy. And mm, that's a, incredible. Yeah. yeah, and 120 megs. Well, listen, and, I, yeah, I won't keep you any longer. I, I've taken a lot of your time, and I'm sure there's <laughs> other callers, but I just want to make a comment. Um, the last question I was going to ask you, but I won't hold you to it now, is it, may, it might be a good idea. I think viewers might uh, appreciate it, or I know I would, to uh, see some sort of demonstration on how to implement, activate, and utilize uh, the uh, profiles settings that exist in Windows 95. Okay, yeah, sure. I, I agree with that, and we will do that. Great. Um, and uh, I get a lot of email about what we can do on the show, and <laughs> we're, we're planning on doing a lot of it. Great. Um, that's one reason we put the clips up there, so if you've missed it before, yeah. we're going to have it available there for Great. you as well. But I do appreciate that. Okay, thanks a lot. Thanks okay. A lot. okay. The Take gentleman care. that was mentioning profiles and such, that's so that if you have one multiple people right. in your household you actually can have different icon settings mm -hmm. on your desktop and you can install different programs That's it right. gives you the ability to help secure some of your data mm -hmm. so that when your son signs on or your daughter signs on or your wife signs on or your husband signs on it's, be it whatever yeah, separate everybody has your separate sign on yeah. which just means that you can keep your colors your background and everything all separate and different right. and we will do that on an sure, upcoming that show. That sounds great. Okay, thanks very much. That was a good call. And we're going to go off and we're going to talk to... Lou? Lou. Hi, Lou. Hello. How are you today? I'm great. Happy birthday, Steve. <laughs> Is it your birthday? Not my birthday. <laughs> no, no, we gave away a gift oh, of the guest Oh, I thought it yeah. was his birthday. I think your show's great. My oh, question, I uh, My thanks. question was about the worm virus, but it was already basically answered, so... Uh, okay, I haven't heard about it. Uh, and uh, I just wanted to mention to people to be careful of these uh, yeah. rumors that spread. They spread much quicker on the internet than they do anywhere. Yeah, yeah. I guess they do. I guess. They um, do. But I will. T I will take a look tonight. And I, I normally get magazines sent to me on a regular basis via email. So yeah. in the morning when I sign on, I have about three or four magazines there. One from CNET. I got uh, ZNet. Uh, a few other. Uh, PC Week, and they come through to my email. I haven't heard anything about that worm virus, but if oh. there is one, it will be there. And even if there isn't one, they will mention it. But there's been a lot of chain mail type of yeah. uh, information going out. You have to be yeah, careful of. I know I've gotten that chain mail too, and yeah. I just replied back to the same person saying, "Okay, Don't send well, me. I think your show's great, and I'd like to give a big shout out to my man E. Yeah." <laughs> Excellent. There, there, there's ones there that's, all over that, the place. Now that's a happy computer person. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. It's great to see people get so excited. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and we have his phone number. All right. Okay, let's go off to the next one. And we're going to talk to Jills. Is that how would you pronounce that? Jill? I'm sure. Is it your birthday? Nobody who wasn't watching. Not my it. birthday. <laughs> Hi, Close Jill. Enough. How Hi. are you today? Not too bad. Can we say your name right? It's Jill. 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 Okay, sorry okay, about that. Sir. I've I've heard much worse. <laughs> okay, all right, we did good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the, the question I had pretty much was uh, towards upgrading. Um, I keep trying to go in talking to people uh, regarding upgrading, and they keep trying to sell me a different computer. Okay. Now the question that I'm wondering is, uh, I want to upgrade. Right now, what I have is a 486SX, and I want to upgrade at least to uh, just at least to a Pentium. Okay. Uh, now. What approximately would be the cost, and uh, would I have to change my entire motherboard for that? Hmm. Motherboard for sure. 
Mm -hmm. Processor uh, for sure. Process. So you're looking at a motherboard or a processor. You said it was a 46 SX. SX, yeah. Okay, so you're also looking at changing your memory uh, because the new Pentium motherboards only accept 72 pin memory, mm -hmm. as well as they also they also ex they, uh, get better memory as well. So you can mm -hmm. put SD RAM memory in and EDO memory in. Okay, but so the memory have... you have over won't come over. So you got memory. System board. You got a system board. Processor. You got a CPU. Right. Okay, and which is the processor. Now, depending uh, on what I.O. cards are in there. That's where the big one comes. You won't need your I.O. card because most of them, in fact, all of them, are built right onto the, the yeah, motherboard Yeah, they're all built right onto now. the motherboard. So your floppy drive controller and your hard drive controller are going to be built onto there. So you're going to save money there. But what you have to look at is your types of video card. Right. Whether or not you have the extra long cards, which are called local bus. Mm -hmm. Um, because they can't come over. Only ISA cards can come over, right. which are, they fit into the 216 slots. I think I've got a motherboard here, don't we? Nope. Okay, sorry, we did. No. <laughs> um, but you're looking at uh, the ISA slots and the PCI slots in the new Pentium versus the ISA slot and the local bus in the older 486s. Mm -hmm. um, so you may be looking at a new video card as well. Depending on what you have and what he yeah. has. The benefit of upgrading is the fact that you now get to choose what you want inside your machine. If you buy a machine outright, for the most part you're buying a pre-packaged deal yep. and that you're going to get the video card that they give you and all your extra options are going to be added on top of that. Mm -hmm. If you decide that you want to upgrade yourself and actually do put the machine together yourself, which isn't really that difficult, I mean, uh, you can actually do it, It's yeah. you can see how to do it, um, but it gives you the ability to, one, have the the pride of building your own system, costs, you're not going to really save an awful lot of money. I would no. say you may save four to five hundred dollars um, in that area. Because I mean, we did yeah. an upgrade okay, here yeah. and we did that upgrade for under nine hundred dollars. Right. And that was from a 486 DX4100 yeah. to a Pentium 200 with MMX and the, he finally ended up with 32 megs of SD RAM, mm -hmm. and that was just under $900. So if you think about going out and buying a Pentium 166 now, and you're going to be getting them for about $1,100, you kind of weigh off the two. Yeah. Um, so the benefit is, if you want to learn how to build your own machine, it's not a very difficult task. Uh, it really can be done by anyone, <laughs> right? Yeah, even he can do yeah, it. Yeah, even I can do it. Uh, but you're only going to save at possibly two to $300 uh, in that area. Yeah. So really for, uh, like if I wanted to cover my, uh, my, my backside, uh, I would uh, really, for the extra 200 bucks I'm going to spend on a new computer, I might as well go with the new computer and get covered by the warranties. Might, might as well go, the exactly. The, the warrant, warranty, warranty is definitely. something else. Well, you get the warranty on the parts. Remember, the manufacturer yeah. is selling you the computer system. The warranty they're giving you is on the basis that when you bring the product back to them, they're going to RMA back to the original manufacturer yeah, and yeah, get the product back. So the parts that you buy are still going to be warranty. Oh, yeah. Warranty. Right? So just to say that you are going to get that ability. But each but part's probably only a year warranty. Yes. Whereas with a whole unit, you're probably going to get anywhere from a from year two, to two years. Or even three, I've seen yeah. some places. If you're, not getting, if you're not getting two to three year warranties on the system, my recommendation, and this doesn't even cover for name brand, because name brand equipment's normally a one year warranty. Now it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah mo most of them are issued with one and year you, warranty and you have the option of purchasing extra warranties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that is a big benefit because if your drive goes, your hard drive, and you have to buy a specific hard drive to put it back into it, depending on if you bought uh, a made computer or, or a, a brand name type of machine, then you could be looking at some pretty hefty dollars there. Say, mm -hmm. what, $300 yeah. for a 3 gig drive, yep. which is a, a, a large portion of what you've paid. So yeah, you don't get the benefit of the warranty if you're building your own machine. You do get a warranty on each individual part, so you're kind of covered there. Um, but that's where you weigh off. And you also weigh off the fact that if I want an ATI 3D Expression 4 yeah. meg card, I can get that a lot cheaper than yeah. having them added as an option into my system. Yeah. So hopefully that helps the answer a bit. Oh, it does, it does. It's been an ongoing war between upgrading, as well as you have to look at your power supply, right? Making sure your power supply uh, is, it shouldn't be a problem. Is probably fine. At least 200. Yeah. At least yeah. 200. Yeah, 200 volt, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so I would say your best bet, sell the machine you have now, go out and get another machine if that's the way you want to do it, um, or keep the machine you have now and, and have two. <laughs> so that there's an option yeah. there too. And start a little network. Yeah. Okay. Okay? Well, thank you very much. Have okay. a good day. Okay, bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, we got Ron on the line. Hi, Ron. Hi, Ron. Yeah, I'm here. How are you today? 
Uh, Matt, I've been having a problem uh, with the power <coughs> source on my uh, my uh, uh, RS one thousand uh, IBM compatible. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. It the screen doesn't light up, and the uh, the light on the front of the um, the master on the front of the uh, the computer. Yes. The hard drive. Uh, what could be the problem? So your screen doesn't come on, there's no lights on the front of the computer? No lights at all. And Nothing. I checked the wall and I plugged it into the wall. Right. I had it on a power bar. Okay. And then I plugged it into the wall and it still doesn't let up, so. Power supply? Um, have you, okay, when you actually do hit that, do you get, you might want to put your hand in the back where the fan is. Okay just to see if there's any air blowing out of there at all. Do you yeah. hear anything? Okay. Uh, when, you, when you turn on your computer system, uh -huh. there is, like what Steve was saying, there's a round grate in the back, mm -hmm. and okay. that's where a fan, a big fan, tries to cool down the power supply. Okay. And if you put your hand back there, you're not feeling anything coming from the fan, as you were saying, okay. uh, then that could be a problem. Yeah. The other area to check is something that we always got caught by. Remember the little voltage oh, selector on the yeah, very back? 220 or 115. Yeah. Take a look at the back of your power supply. There could be a little switch there that allows you 220 or 115 and make sure it's in the 115 area. Okay. Okay, so that could have hit, yeah. been hit by accident. Okay. Most likely it's your power supply, uh, probably gone. And what's a power supply worth nowadays? 40, About 40, 40 dollars. Bucks. Okay. And they're they're pretty normal between machines, so I would I would say that's where your problem is. Okay. Okay. Thank you. You have All a right. good day. Thanks Thank so yep. much for calling. Same. What's that? Okay, so it's been a great. I'm gonna check in. Uh, I'm checking the message board. I don't know if Ivan's out there. Maybe nobody's put anything on our message board today, but I'll check that as soon as I get home. She's, okay. Uh, and uh, our next show we're going to be doing is going to be email. So if you've emailed us over the last season we're going to hopefully hit as many email as possible. Mm -hmm. We're right. going to have a rifle through email. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> anything else you want to say, sir? No. How about the book that you have open over there? I have there? a chair cam set up. Oh, you have a chair cam? Yeah. Let's see if I can get it running. <laughs> okay, it's time to say goodbye, but I'm going to see if I can launch this at the same time. Yep. And as they go into closing credits, we're going to see if we can dial into Steve's house. If we can go to the computer for a door. Okay, we're going to say goodbye, and then we're going to go to the computer. So All goodbye, right, we'll, we'll see, see you again. next Have Tuesday. A... All right. Thanks.